Okay, today I want to talk about responsive images in, in news. Very short, the idea is we all know that websites don't only look like this on desktop, but we also have like smartphones, tablets, and they actually are a big chunk of the market. So we started to do responsive design many years ago, and as a result of that, we also started to do something called responsive um, images. Basically, there are two reasons why you want to use responsive images. The first one is art direction. You might want to show different images on different devices. And the second reason is performance. Basically, if you have an image which is, I don't know, 3,000 pixels wide and looks really great on an iMac, you don't want to load that picture on your iPhone or your Android phone because it's like way too big. The first one, art direction, basically means that you choose different images or different image uh, ratios depending on the screen. So for example, I wanna maybe have uh, this photo here on a big screen, but on a small screen in portrait, I want to show only the important part. If you, you would just use the normal, like cutting off like background image container, something like that, probably you would have way more stuff here at the bottom or the guy cut off something like that. So you want to, un like, you want to choose different images for different screen sizes. That's art direction. In most cases, you'll not need that. In cases like header images or stuff like that, it makes sense to do that. The basic HTML5 code for that is like that. It is, the easiest solution is called the picture element. Basically, here you see that's the old image resource, and it's still there. So for fallback reasons, if you have an IE8 accessing the website, it will just use the, the old image here. And for basically every browser, you have this picture element here where you can define different images for different screen sizes. So here you can add any media rule. So for example, this one here is for like at least decent sized screens. And there I want to use the head JPEG. And um, of course we have um, monitors who have Retina and some don't have, uh, don't have that. So uh, depending on that, you want to choose either the 2X or the 1X version. So for um, screens with less pixel density, you just want to have a faster loading image. Basic, basically the same idea is here defined by mobile where I have a different kind of picture. And then this one here is the fallback, also is a retina. So the way you do that in, in Neos, or one solution to do that in Neos, would look something like that. So you see I have here two configurations, one called image big and one called image small. I can, in the back end, choose different images for those. And then basically using the, the image URI, you want to downsize it. So let's say for my normal 800 plus layout, the picture actually has a size of uh, 1,200 pixels. I want to use that size. And for the retina, I want to use a double that size. And then for my norm, like small, um, I have an 800 pixel picture and retina double that size. That would be a, like that whole logic in Neos. The next one is performance. So you don't want to have art directions, you just want to have faster loading images. A use case you'll have with a lot of images. I would recommend it for each image which is maybe like in, in the view which is more than 500 pixels, it makes definitely sense to invest a bit of time to make it a responsive image. So you would use sizes and source set. So in source set, in difference to what we had before, I'm just giving the browser an, an array of different images and I tell them for which like pixel it is. So I say this first image here has 100 pixels with the second image has 200 pixels with four, eight, and so on. You get the idea. And here, this one is quite simple. You can have it a bit more complicated. This one says the image is always 50% of the browser width. So this one is the view width, so basically the browser width. And then you let the browser figure out which image it actually needs. So if I know that, that my, my browser width is 200 pixels, I would normally use the two, uh, sorry, 400, half that, 50% would be 200 pixels. 
I'm choosing the 200 pixel or the browser automatically. If you have a device ratio of two, so Retina, it will automatically choose the 400 pixel and so on. So it basically figures out automatically which one it needs. And the only thing you have to give them is a list of source images and how big an image will be in your design. This is something you can easily use uh, with, with basically all of your images. I, I would recommend is every image which is about, which is bigger than 500 pixel. Um, there you can really see an effect. And uh, Neil's implementation, like I'm using is, here you see it's a bit more complex what I did. So I'm saying here for, basically for mobile, the image is always 100% of the view width. And then for different layouts, I have different sizes. This is something you have to adjust every time. And here at the bottom, you just give a list of source set images. Uh, basically, I'm, I'm always creating a new image or I'm, I'm, I'm scaling the given image and I then give them the access to that. And this one here is actually your kind of choice. That's the, the source is the fallback image if the browser doesn't support. Um, in my case, I give the big, biggest picture out. Something to consider if you have pictures which need to be delivered at more than 2,500 pixels, you will have a serious performance impact. So that image will probably be around one megabyte, maybe one and a half megabyte, if you have it as JPEG. So that's already a serious size. Um, if you want to have like a really good image looking on, on an iMac, uh, which is, I don't know, like around 6,000 pixels, you probably face an image which is the size of five to 10 megabytes. And there you should work with some uh, async loading. So the, the, the way you would normally do that is have something similar to that. So I'm first loading a 2,500 pixel resolution. And then when the page is fully loaded, you're trans loading another bigger one and transitioning it to. Yeah, that's actually it about responsive images.